Hey, 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 so I'm back again with another wonderful screencast about Roots. And in this screencast, I just want to walk through the project structure and explain quickly a couple of things that you might see going on here. Um, so let me just go through the files one by one and uh, just to make sure that you understand what they are and what they're doing. So first, this is the same uh, example app as we were looking at as the result of the last screencast. All I did to generate this app was just run roots new example uh, CD into that folder and then just open it up in Sublime. Uh, I went in, I changed index.j to say hello world and then I ran roots deploy to put it on Heroku. And so now after deploying it you can see that we have a basic very very basic static server in node that it's injected here for use um, if you actually want to run this in production. There's a proc file for Heroku to use and know uh, how to start up the server. Uh, in addition, there's a package.json, which you can always change if you'd like, that specifies what the dependencies are for the server. And so these three specifically you don't have to worry about. And they also don't need to be compiled into public, which is where the output of our compiles go into. Uh, you could see here that we have HTML, we have JS, and we have CSS in here. And so everything has been compiled and compressed down nicely, and, and here's an example of how it looks. But the next time that we uh, watch it and compile, it should also put these files in here, and, and we really don't need them in there. Um, so let's go into app.coffee and add these to the ignores. You can see that there are two ways we can ignore things. We can ignore a file, and we can ignore an entire folder, and the difference between these is is fairly important um, because any file inside of a folder that you ignore will not be um, watched or compiled at all. So for these ones we just have three specific files and all we need to do is add these to the uh, basic array here. So let's just do that right now. There's proc file. Let's add package.json and finally we'll add server.js. And so with that done, um, that should be really nice in terms of keeping our, our public folder clean. Of course, if you don't do that, it's not a big deal at all. Those files will go in there and, and pr no one will know any better. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a good thing to keep in mind. And, and keeping in mind which files are ignored and which ones aren't is important, especially if you are keeping files in here that you don't specifically mean to be compiled into our output here. So while we're in the app.coffee file, let's check out some of these other settings. And they are explained here, um, but I just want to go over it quickly. So here we can see in this layouts object, we do have a default layout set to layout.jade. And the layout paths are going to default to the views folder. And so we don't need to specify views just because that's where I start um, automatically looking for any of your layouts. And so layout.jade we do have here. And you can see that this is fairly standard. Um, set up here. We have the head with a, a couple of basic meta properties. Uh, we've got a title, we've got a link to the style sheet. And then inside of body, if you're familiar with Rails, you might recognize this. Um, yield will be what injects the actual content of the page. So a layout isn't a real page, it's just a wrapper that goes around each page that you create. And it's, it saves you a lot of time because oftentimes you do have the same stuff up here in the head. And maybe you'll have a header or a footer in here that you can also add to the layout for just things that are consistent across every page. Um, but the yield is what will drop the contents of any other file inside of this uh, views folder that's one, not ignored, and two, not a layout. And so that's why when we compile into public, we only get index.html coming out because this particular file is a partial and it's ignored because there's an underscore before it. Um, as you can see in here, we're ignoring any file that has starts with an underscore. And uh, this is mini match syntax as specified up here, but it's it's fairly basic. It's just underscore followed by any any character will be ignored. Um, and so, and then this is a layout, right? So we only really have one valid page in here, which is index.jade. And, and we'll try out making another one in a second. Um, so the contents of index.jade will be compiled and they'll be dumped right in here uh, where the yield is. And so moving through the rest of the file, um, we're loading up require.js here. Of course, you don't need to use require.js. It's just a nice uh, convention to stick with, a very fast and clean way to load your scripts. So I guess I just added my own recommendation in here. Um, but this is easy to take out. And then finally at the bottom, you certainly don't want to delete this piece 
And this is just a small snippet of JavaScript that uh, hooks up the WebSocket so that whenever you save any of your files, it'll automatically reload the browser like we saw before. Really useful. Um, this is only in development. As soon as you compile and deploy to production, this will um, just be erased and it'll print out as an empty string, so nothing will show up there. Uh, so no need to worry about this. You can just kind of leave it there at the bottom of the file and all will be well. And if you delete it, um, all will be well too, but you won't get the uh, auto-reload functionality. Moving up to the Assets folder, we'll just go through this quickly. Um, the Fave icon, of course, you can assume what this does. Um, and as you can see, both Assets and Views just dump straight into public. So we don't retain the Assets folder, nor do we retain the Views folder. Um, the contents of both these folders just dump into the root of public. Um, and these are the only two folders that are handled that way specifically. But here in JS, you can see we're defaulting to CoffeeScript. Again, there's a brief um, require setup here. I'm loading in jQuery by default um, just because it's a useful thing to have. And up top, it's uh, easy to miss this, but there's also a script concatenation here. And so we can concatenate scripts much like sprockets, if you're familiar with Rails once again, you could just use require and uh, point it to the path for the file and it will take this file and compile and actually just drop it right in here. Um, so you can easily create a single file that includes the contents of everything else without having to litter your page with a bunch of different scripts, um, if that's the way you'd like to do it. So here's the one that it, it dumps in, and this is nothing special. Um, require itself here, and pi.htc, don't have to worry about too much. Um, it's used specifically for um, rendering a lot of CSS3 properties in Internet Explorer. So if you're concerned with old Internet Explorer, this is really a, a lifesaver here. Um, and it's used in some of the uh, CSS. So we can go over that later. Um, images, there's nothing exciting here, just a basic light noise tile. Um, and in the CSS, you can see that we have um, stylus here, um, very useful. We've got a couple of mix-ins that are coming from the CSS library. We've got an um, import, which works almost exactly like the uh, concatenation we saw down here in the JavaScript for this settings file, which just sets up a bunch of uh, nice basic variables here um, that are used throughout the CSS library. And again, there'll be another video coming up uh, after this that goes over more specifically um, what's going to go down uh, with the CSS library. So we can worry about that later. But for now, this is uh, fairly clean and straightforward. So I'm going to do uh, a couple of things here just to show you how they work. First, I'm going to add a, a new folder into Views. I'll call it Shenanigans. It's always a good name for a folder. And then inside this folder, I'll just add a new View file, and I'll call this Example. Um, or I'll, I'll call it Index. Index.jid. And so if we go back to our... Um, terminal and we run roots watch as soon as this compiles um, we could switch back to the public folder and see that we actually do have the shenanigans folder again like I said before dumping out to root and inside of it we have this compiled index.html file and so we should be able to hit the uh, shenanigans root and we'll get a blank page because we didn't put anything in that file um, but let's try actually putting something in here. Look at all these shenanigans. Um, and so as soon as we save that, we should see the update going down right in here, um, which is just fantastic. And so you could also do this outside of views if you want um, and outside of assets. So if I were to create a new folder here um, called whatever, um, Let's see, I'm just going to briefly uh, restart the watcher. And as soon as that compiles out, we can check back on our public folder. And we could see that whatever also will just go straight to root. And so it's pretty flexible how you structure your folders. The only thing you really have to know here is that assets and views specifically are handled a little differently and that they'll dump their contents uh, straight to the root of public. So that's it for this brief overview. Uh, in the next video, we'll be going over a bunch of uh, the CSS library stuff, which is really exciting, so stay tuned.